If you've been following this project, you know I started building a home data center this winter. 10 gigs from scratch. I had no idea what I was doing. I did a lot of research. Not deep enough to avoid mistakes, though. Uh, so, if you are also a beginner, you can learn from what I did wrong. Check my previous videos, subscribe to see what next. And in this video, or maybe a series, I will show some parts of this wreck. Some are interesting, some are not. The boring part is the hardware, like this one, routers, uh, you can find reviews elsewhere. The interesting stuff for me uh, is uh, what I've never seen others do, or things I did in a unique way. Uh, let's start simple, the incoming switch. Uh, why a switch and not a router? Router. Router. Depending where you live in the UK, the US or Australia. Uh, well, uh, look, uh, there is... Uh, it was the fiber. Uh, it is a fiber uh, coming from ISP. I opened uh, the router. Uh, that's why it looks that way. So the ISP gives me five dynamic public IPs. In one of my videos I showed how you can use Microtic Hex uh, PoE. Uh, you can see two screws from that. Um, to use it uh, both as a switch and a router to assign a few public uh, IPs. I link the video. I actually don't know if I have it in English, but yeah, maybe you are lucky. Don't listen that kind of English. Yeah, so... Um, I dropped the idea to use this hex power and I decided to go with the switch. Industrial grade manage switch instead. I will put uh, the name to the description. So now the ISP comes into the switch. You can see this fiber. And I can grab all five IPs uh, on any of Ethernet ports and then do whatever I want with it. But I didn't need uh, such much... How much such much? <laughs> such a big switch for that, that you have seen a small unmanaged switch, unmanaged switch uh, with uh, SFP port and Ethernet would be enough like that small and nice uh, good guy, good, nice, I don't know actually, because I didn't use it, I bought, I was thinking that I will use this, but I didn't. So why did I buy uh, that big one that you have seen there? Uh, power. Uh, that's the key reason, and I should have started with that. So let's talk about power and come back to the switch later and this small guy will wait for a better time uh, for some review in the future. I wanted all my devices uh, to have one power entry point with backup power and maybe solar power in the future. Uh, that's by, by the way another project uh, subscribe to follow and uh, to do that everything had to run on PoE but not just any PoE. Uh, I needed input that works wide DC range from 9 to 57 volts. Uh, and um, uh, this industrial PoE switch is uh, perfect for that. They have a bug bust converter, so they take any voltage uh, in the range and output 48 uh, PoE, active PoE, uh, the right one. Uh, that's great if you are using, for example, uh, 24 uh, solar battery and want to switch uh, um, 48 and wants to have 48 uh, PoE so they will uh, boost this voltage uh, and also when your battery drops uh, it will boost it anyway so they are perfect for this and then you want to have uh, for example a fallback to ACDC 48 A8 um, adapter and in that case you need the second power input and they also have it. Two power inputs, uh, failover, uh, wide DC range from solar battery, uh, that 
has, uh, well, 12 is not good, 24, well, you got the point. Uh, these switches are perfect for this, that's why. I don't have solo yet, so I powered the switch to the first input uh, from the AC-DC 48 uh, volts adapter. The adapter is plugged into a socket here. The I socket is plugged into a UPS. And the UPS is plugged into another eye socket there. Uh, why so complex? Uh, uh, this gives me one main uh, power entry, uh, the future proof uh, with possible backup in the future. Everything else runs on PoE uh, from this switch, routers, Wi Fi. Uh, cameras um, and um, what if something hangs and I need to reboot everything uh, that's why I use a socket here it works over uh, mobile networks if you don't know yet not Wi-Fi so if Wi-Fi is down I st it still works uh, and it is after the UPS uh, uh, logical yeah so I can turn off power when needed, otherwise it would be um, back it up with this UPS. So I can switch it on off remotely and reboot uh, everything. I didn't rename uh, widgets from my previous configuration that was here, so I hope it's the right one. I first want to show you that I will shut down uh, that one, uh, so the UPS, and nothing should, no, no, nothing serious should happen. See, I cut power to the UPS, it beeps, and this I circuit is still working just like the rest of the setup. Again, it was just a demo. I rebooted that one, the main one. I didn't want to reboot this one along with my equipment, so that's why. Beep, beep. Meow, meow. No, nobody wants to give more sound. And uh, now, why do I need the first eye socket? Uh, this one, before the UPS. Uh, it tells me when the power goes out. Uh, if you only had uh, that one after the UPS, you wouldn't know. The UPS would keep uh, things running. Yeah? Logical. So, first I socket tells me about power outages. Uh, then I can log into this switch uh, and turn off some low-priority PoE devices. Uh, and so later when uh, the UPS battery uh, dies, uh, this I socket also goes offline and uh, alerts me. So one tells me uh, power is out, the other tells me uh, when um, the UPS is dead. Let me also show you briefly how the power cut notifications work. Uh, you have seen I received a power outage notification. I didn't show you uh, text messages, WhatsApp, email. I just, for the demo purposes, demonstrated it right here in the dashboard. Uh, I will get another power restore message when the power is restored. Uh, and also both eye sockets, uh, this one and another one, they have energy meter. And it allows me to measure energy. I can track PoE power usage with this one, full PoE system, everything what is connected, or total power use with this one, including all other stuff connected into this UPS and the UPS itself. Helpful for planning the solar setup. So that's how it looks. Uh, you can see um, energy metering, so it's power consumption over the time. You can set um, the price for electricity and annual. You can monitor annual power usage or weekly. 
uh, or monthly. So this is another wreck in the garage. Yeah, well, I promised briefly. And um, let me also show you about how it shows the current power consumption. So here is power consumption, 46 is actually from that one, the total power consumption of the system right now. And here I can see the power consumption of just my POE setup. It still has the old name and VR, but it's POE. So that part is just six watts difference uh, between, yeah, uh, because uh, six watts for for the UPS itself and for two ice sockets is just little power consumption. That's why it's small. That small difference. Bonus because I already have a socket here and here. I can also add smoke alarms, uh, motion alarms, temperature monitoring. Uh, but well, that's another subject for another time. So back to the switch. I said I can shut off devices. Uh, by logging into this switch. Let me show you the interface very briefly. I will show you this way. Uh, here is PoE config. I can disable uh, ports here this way. Select uh, the port, disable and apply. Uh, yes, yeah, so very inconvenient, uh, not user friendly, but it works. Um, and the switch support of LANs. Uh, let me show you, for example, here. Yeah, so it's the most important uh, to me. I run both ISP traffic and local traffic, so VLANs uh, uh, must. Uh, a lot of other features that I don't need. Uh, this switch, by the way, is a kind of like a Cisco operation system, I think. Uh, after you configure it, you have to save the config and uh, you do this in here otherwise uh, you will lose uh, all your configuration i figured out this after i lost two weeks of settings after a reboot otherwise it's quite fine a lot of features that i don't need so we've done with the incoming switch and power concept uh, next route uh, this microtic, well, no, no much, not much to say. You know it. So um, let me tell you about another one I had here before. You probably could see this in my previous episodes. Let's go uh, to review this, and I will tell you why it didn't work. So here we have this still with mounting elements. Why didn't it work? I couldn't power it from PoE at all. Well, with some exception, Microtic PoE in their devices and many of their devices is really weird. Yeah, if you got it working with 10 other PoE devices in a big project, you deserve a medal. Uh, you should really aim for active uh, PoE in and PoE out everywhere. Uh, this one takes a PoE, active one, from here. Good, but it can't power anything else. Not so good. So here's my base setup. Incoming switch. Router with PoE in. PoE powered. Wi-Fi. Another Wi-Fi. Another two heavy consumers, never tired to consume food. PoE cameras, not that one, but I'm lazy to go to show the right one. So the base setup is done. If I had to redo this uh, for 10 gigs especially, I would look uh, now for router with uh, four SFP plus ports, uh, cages actually, uh, at least 16 ports total, uh, at least 8 ports with PoE out, wide DC input, dual, dual power input, uh, uh, proper operation system with real VLAN supports, uh, not like you do this on Microtic, but I haven't found a router like that. Or maybe I didn't search 
uh, hard enough. So I didn't cover uh, small things, uh, but uh, yeah, guys, I will show them in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I think that's it for this video. Bye.